wondering if you could FaceTime Mr. Beast. Hey, everybody. You might be wondering why it looks so damn cold out. Well, we're in North Dakota and I'm about to speak at State Student Council talking about all things YouTube, Mr. Beast, a bunch of other fun stuff. Let's go inside because it's 10 degrees outside and let's get this going. Please welcome Reed Dukesher. I was born in rugby, North Dakota. Where's rugby? My life was football. I'm sure some people in here can relate that like your entire lives revolve around sports right now. I flew it to New York. I got an internship. Weirdly enough, met a sports agent. It was at a hotel. He gave me an opportunity. I took an internship. So this was at the sports agency I was at early on. I was so lucky in that I got to work with some of the biggest names in sports. And so I worked my ass off to get into this sports agency world. I just wanted an opportunity. And in my mind, I could have just waited for that door to open, but I kind of realized that like, I might as well just break down the door. And so I was willing to put myself out there, traveled to LA, and finally got that opportunity. But I wasn't really truly fulfilled. And so in 2013, I found a website called YouTube. I realized that there was a YouTube channel out there that I really enjoyed called Dude Perfect. They had one million subscribers. I found their channel. I was fully enamored by what these guys were doing. And this was the first time I had realized that, okay, maybe athletes aren't the center of influence. Maybe these guys that are making trick shots on the internet is who people are actually looking up to. So I sent Dude Perfect a cold email. They literally hit me back, I would say 10 minutes later, and I started to realize that there was more on the internet than just trick shots. So March 3rd, 2018. This is a very important date to remember in my life. And at the time, I don't even think I realized. I, I met this person who sent me this DM. So this is a Twitter DM. I'll read it for you guys. It goes, before I go in depth and lay out everything, can you explain to me what you do? I'm excited to get to you. It was Mr. Beast. So on March 3rd, I got a DM from a guy named Jimmy. Everyone thinks Jimmy is an overnight success. What they don't realize is he poured his blood, sweat, and tears into YouTube. Jimmy's early content was literally just him making videos for 100 people. What well, didn't happen until 2018 when he started to catch steam. It was a simpler time. It was a lot easier to get stuff done. Everyone today probably knows Mr. Beast as like the cover of Forbes. He was just named a Forbes 30 under 30 for the second straight year. Obviously, we did Squid Game. I think the video's now over. Hopefully, it's at 275 million views. You don't even want to know how much money we spent on these sets but I think this just kind of put him in a different stratosphere of influence. I don't know if you guys ever, ever noticed this, but Jimmy ended up gaining 10 million subscribers in the month that he posted Twid, uh, Squid Game. But what did I actually learn from all this? I made this slide in 2018 to kind of show what I thought was happening in the world. It basically tells you about the shift in consumer loyalty. People were paying attention to Kylie Cosmetics. They were paying attention to Donald Trump. They were paying attention to Elon Musk. They were more drawn into individuals than they were to the actual companies. And so this is the bedrock that I really built the company on, was centered around individual loyalty. I've learned that influence has completely changed because of the internet. I also learned that anyone in the world can upload a video and grow an audience. I figured out there was a lot of opportunities that were coming out of this space that didn't involve me just being a YouTuber. When you just look at a creator business, yes, the creator is in the center but the creator creates the opportunity for a lot of people to come along. Creators have editors, they have thumbnail artists, they have designers. I thankfully play this manager role over here, and it's honestly never been a better time to be a creator. I hear this all the time when I talk to people about being a content creator, they're like, oh, well, it's oversaturated, it's really hard to grow. It's actually not. Today is, in my opinion, the best time ever to be a content creator. You wanna take advantage of new platforms, I think what, what I've seen from YouTube Shorts, this is one that I tell people a lot, and it may seem obvious, it may really seem obvious, but it's make content that you actually enjoy. I've seen so many people make video game content or start playing Fortnite because they know that they can make a lot of money playing Fortnite when they actually hate the game. They don't wanna be playing Fortnite, and they get in this weird area where they're stuck after two to three years where they have this big business playing Fortnite, but they actually don't wanna play the video game. So you wanna start from a foundation of enjoying what you're creating. And then the last thing, start with shorts. Like I said, organic reach has never been better with shorts. I would 
honestly tell you guys, start on TikTok, start on YouTube Shorts, throw as many things at the wall as possible, and some of it will stick, especially if you're proud of your content, and every video is better than the next. Hi, Reed, my name is Nora, and my teachers at school wondered how Mr. Beast makes all his money to give away. So uh, let me just like break it down as simply as I can. So when you're a YouTube creator, your number one source of revenue is ads from your YouTube video. I would say that's 30% of the revenue that Jimmy makes on a yearly basis. The next 30% usually comes from brands. I mean, how many people in here have seen Mr. Beast read a Honey ad or promote a mobile game? The next 20% is usually apparel. I don't, I don't see anyone in like Mr. Beast apparel in here, uh, but we do have a large uh, direct-to-consumer apparel business. And then everything else is just kind of like auxiliary revenue. Like we syndicate content, we make videos on other platforms like Netflix and Hulu and things like that. And so that kind of makes up his whole revenue chart. My question for you is, from a managing perspective, do you think that other talent agency managers truly have their best interest in mind for influencers, or do you think they're scamming? So I, I think, so this is one thing that we've kind of taken a stance on, and we actually use emojis as our like company pillars, and one of our emojis is a star, and so the star stands for talent first. I think there's a lot of talent, talent agencies out there that represent the brand and the individual, and to us, like, I've always seen that as a conflict of interest because like, who's, who are you actually favoring, right? Are you on the brand side? Or are you on the actual talent side? And so that's one thing that's been at the center of our business for a long time is like we're, we've always been talent first. But I do think that because of all the money being made in the space right now, there is that disconnect between like, who is the agent or manager actually loyal to at the end of the day. I'm not going to like name any of the people that kind of play both sides of the fence, but it's something that we've thought a lot about as a company over the last five years, but good question. Thank you. Would you still recommend uh, platforms like Shorts and TikTok for people that want to remain faceless on the internet? This is an interesting question because some of the most important faceless, I think the most popular faceless creators in the industry right now, I would say is Dream, well, who I also not, personally represent. Not anymore, um, though. Corpse, Husband, I think is another one. Um, and they've both stayed faceless without using TikTok. Now that's gonna change. Um, Dream obviously just revealed yeah. who he actually was, and so he's gonna launch a TikTok. I think if you guys look at Corpse's TikTok, Corpse Husband's TikTok, you'll see a lot of music-focused TikToks that don't require his face. Mm -hmm. I would say do the same thing. Because are you, are you comfortable talking? Well, yeah. I'm yeah, as, as long as you're comfortable speaking, I think you can really make a really good short-form content. You don't have to show your face. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask, as a small content creator, how do you keep your videos from uh, becoming repetitive? What type of content do you make? I mean, mostly just playing games with friends. Yeah, so do you, do you watch like Carl Jacobs or a, any of the like Dream yeah. S&P folks? Do you, have you ever noticed that their live streams are very orchestrated? Like they're, they're actually semi, they're non-scripted, but they've kind of scripted out the arc of the whole live stream. I, I would say you want to focus on being entertaining across the whole hour, two hour, three hour live stream. What ends up happening with a lot of live streamers is they just get in, they just play the video game they're not interacting with chat, they're not making it interesting. And what I've seen on Twitch really happen is like the most interesting creators always rise up to the top. And they don't even have to be playing video games, right? Like we represent Hassan, who is like a political streamer, does not play video games, but he's very entertaining. And so like, don't even worry about the video game, just focus on how do I be the most entertaining for the person that's watching me. I was wondering if you could FaceTime Mr. Beast. Kevin. Kevin, can you go get my phone and the, um, if Jimmy doesn't answer, I'm gonna be so disappointed. I just uploaded, I'm watching it. Thanks, Take dude. care. I'll call you later. <laughs>